God bless you and welcome again to another time uh, with me. I am your host, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III, founder and CEO of the Brinson Institute. Well, today I guess I'm by myself. Normally we have guests and uh, we're going to continue bringing on our Brinson Institute fellows, but I thought I would just spend some time in sharing with you, my beloved audience and friends and viewers of the Brinson Institute. We're so glad and thankful for all of you that have participated and all of you that have made calls and contacts this month. Uh, I just want you to give me a call. Pick up the phone and give us a call. Tell us how these broadcasts is, and you that are listening to us and viewing us and those that are listening to us by the radio, tell us how we're doing. Come up with some ideas. What kinds of things you would like to see us talk about in the incoming year? Uh, our number should be on the screen. Uh, if not, it'll appear shortly. 773-616-1951. That's 773-616-1951. 1951, or you can just touch us through our website at thebrinsoninstitute.com or call us or go on our website or email me at apostledoc, D-O-C-7, at AOL.com, apostledoc, A-P-O-S-L-T-E-D-O-C, uh, yes, apostledoc, the number seven, at AOL.com, or better yet, just call us. Call us or text us at 773- 616-1951, and just let us hear from you. We're just excited. Ah, we're coming down. We normally don't rubber stamp our broadcasts, but uh, for you that are watching us, this particular broadcast, I thought it would be good to talk about it because this is the month of December. We're going to rubber stamp, time stamp this one, December, the month of December 2017. Uh -huh. This is the season for what we call Yuletide, the Yuletide season. This is people are going through issues of trying to get gifts and remember people and others are suffering because they don't have a gift, but you are a gift. And so this is what we would know as the Christmas season or the Yuletide season or Jesus being the reason for the Christmas season of celebrating, of love, of gift giving, of remembrance. And what I wanted to do is just kind of challenge you as we have entered this month, uh, the month of December, and preparing ourselves to go into a new, a new year, 2018, 2018, a brand new year, a year that you have not seen. Even though some of you that are in the spiritual year knew that 2018, the new year, of the Hebrew calendar, the spiritual calendar started in October. So some of us, we're already, you know, October, November, December, we, we're coming out of the first trimester and we're going into the fourth month and yet others are going into the first month of a new year, 2018. And I thought about that as I looked at 2018. What do we say about that? Eight is a number of new beginnings. Ten is a number of completion. So if we take ten, which means to be completed, a completion of a task or completion of an assignment. You have 10 fingers, 10 toes, 10 completion. And you put the number eight there. The number eight means new beginnings, new process. It's about resurrection. It's about uh, translation. It's about infinity. It's about moving forward. On why is that? Because eight is one number after seven. So when you think about seven, you think about perfection perfection or completion in spiritual perfection, something that moves toward perfection or something that has been completed because it has matured. So a maturation or maturing of something that has become perfected. So a spiritual perfection or spiritual maturing of an assignment or event with 10 added to seven of 17, then the completion or the wholeness of a completed assigned task. So we move into eight, which is one plus. That means that now we're going back to one plus the seven, which means now we're in number eight, which means new beginnings, birthing forth, resurrection, 
resurrection, to come up with something new, to start something new, to birth something out. So in the year 2018, what are you birthing out? As we move toward the end of 2017 in December, what have you come to the conclusion that you have matured in? There's some areas of your life that you have matured and you have now at a point where been there, done that, got a t-shirt, as they say, or I have finished this part of my assignment I am moving towards some new dimensions, some new areas of creativity. I am being purged or pruned or cleaned up from the exhaustion or from the use that God used me. I was watching uh, uh, Reverend Dr., uh, the teacher Derek Prince, and he was talking about how we have sort of uh, misread and misdefined or did a misdiagnosis of the text, every branch in me that beareth fruit, I purge it that it may bring forth more fruit. And so he was talking about how we in the Western world, we have not really taken a look at purge and what it means in the agricultural world of, e of the East. Purge in the agricultural world of the East never meant cutting. So if you look at the Greek word for purge and look at it from an agricultural standpoint, purge meant to clean, to clean, or to pour water on to clean. So that means that takes a whole another part of that. That means that's why if you read that text as a scripture, it said, and because of that, ye are all clean. That means I have cleaned you up. Every branch of me that bared fruit, you've been bearing fruit. You have existed through this season. And while you have bare fruit because of your fruit, you attract certain things. Fruit attracts bugs. It attracts the dirt and the sand of the elements that it, it lives in. It lives, that is a part of its environment. So if you're going to bear fruit and you're in an environment where it's sandy or windy, you, you, you become uh, touched by the elements and if there are, 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 are ants and other insects that crawl up on the leaves and like to eat the leaves and disrupt the fruit, it gets purged. That means it gets clean. So if you are a fruit giver and you are a fruit grower, every branch in me that bear it fruit I purge it, I clean it up, I pour water on it, I shake off the dirt, the dust, the grimes, I get a, get, deal with the insects and the pesticides and all the stuff that start it or keep it from producing at its maximum. What is it that have kept you from producing at your maximum or what is it that you need a refreshing in? Pouring over fresh water, putting water on the plant, rubbing it, shaking it, shaking off those unwanted elements and things that it has come to host it. So when you have bared fruit then and you are matured, what things do you need to shake off of you so that you can continue? There's something about the kingdom and the kingdom concepts. God always challenges us to grow. He always challenges us to improve. He always challenges us to do better. He challenges us not to get stuck, but find the kinds of things and be involved with the kind of people, uh, understand the kind of places where you can get the most momentum out of what God has called you to be as you are becoming and doing the work of ministry or and doing what God has called you to do based upon your purpose as far as what you've been destined to do. So as we look at this ending of the month of December and preparing to go in the month of January, where are we? What's, what is it that we say we have finished? What is it that God has taken us out of? What are we prepared to go into? What new insights? What, what is it that have been dead that needs to be resurrected. 
What is it that we have that needs to be translated or moved to new dimensions? What is it that we need to change our ideas and our concepts to move forward and what God calls us? I say to you that the month of December ought to be a period of transition. As we move out of 2017 and go into 2018, there are certain stages, and even for you that are watching me, listening to me, there are periods in your life that God has challenged you to transcend, transcend, to transcend, to look at the transcend. If you say, well, it's time for me to go through a transformation, then I got to transcend. So if I'm going to transcend, I got to transit, transit. If you look at the word T-R-A-N-S-I-T, transit, in motion. But if you take the word and break it down, T-R-A-N, trans, I-T, it. What is the it that needs to be in motion? Trans it. What of the it needs to move? Trans it. Then sometimes God says, you know what? You've been so busy transing it. You haven't taken some time and just rest. So how do I transit? T-R-A-N hyphen S-I-T. Transit. Be in motion in quietness. Let me sit for a while and regain my posture to begin to be able to be purged to come into some new dimensions, some new ideas, and some new formulas, some new modalities, some new strategies, and some new ways of doing things because I'm going to transit for a moment. So if I transit, I identify what needs to move. I transit, I wait and listen and hear what God has to say, then I can get into transit. I can be constantly moving in what God told me because I'm moving, I'm listening, I'm watching, and then what is it that I need to transform? Transform. What new forms must be developed in my life? What new formulas must I come up with? What new things must I begin to hear God as I identify the it that needs to be in motion, as I take time and sit and identify and look and watch and hear what God is saying, then what are the new formulas and how do I form now in my movement some new things? 2018, the year of transitional change. The year of transitional change. So as we've been studying about the year of transitional change, you can read certain books. In fact, one of the books that I suggest that you really get and look at is my good friend and buddy, John Tesola. John Tesola, he, he, he talks about... Uh, he has a book, a small book called The Season of Change, Understanding the Season of Change, The Season of Change. Are you in that season? Is this a season of change for you as you move from 17 to 18, or you are just in a season? What are you doing? Where are you in your life, in your ministry, in your relationships, and understanding purpose and destiny? Where is it? that you see that God is saying, I need you to shift now. I need you to be in transition to move into some things. Dr. T.D. Jakes, I was watching his show uh, the other month or so, and I, I remember him saying one thing. He said, you, the things and the activities in your life is not about you. You take it personal. It's not about you, but it's about your next. It's about your next. It's about you, but it's about your next. God is working in you some things in keeping with his will for the next event, the next idea, the next formation, the next program, the next event. Where are you in 2017? In this month of December, how are you looking at and understanding God saying, okay, Brinson, I'm preparing you for what's next. How many of us argue with God in our moment of what we are in, what we're into, whether we like it or not, and God said, you know, it's not about that because all things, and we know, says Paul, all things work together for the good 
to them that love the Lord, to them who are the call to his purpose. Call to his purpose. Call to purpose means constant transitional change. Growth is transition. So how is it and what must I do when I understand that I've been called to do some new things in life and in ministry? And so that's very important for all of us. Very, very, very important for all of us. So let's look at it. Uh, I just want to borrow a couple of themes from John Tessola in his book, Understanding the Season of Change. And one of the things he talks about, and he says, he, in one statement that stuck with me was, God will demand. God will demand a change of mindset from the old season, from the old methods, from the old strategies, and the old activities to the new. God requires, he demands that in our season of transitional change that we must change our mindsets. Well, you know, Apostle Bresley, this is how I've always done it. Uh, mindset change. In order to be in transitional and understand the season of transition, we have to be renewed constantly in our minds that to even know God's will, to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Not only to be conformed, but to be conformed is to take on form. Transform is to step form above and put it in motion by the renewing of our minds. So our mindset dictates where we are in our lives, in our ministries, in our relationships. God always demands, hey, I need you to change your mindset. I need you to change your concept. Not only do I need to change your mindset, because what was good for the last season, we're moving into a new season, and I need, in going into this new season, a new mindset. I need your mind to be set for the new season. Because the old season's set of mind or mindsets was for that season. And you did well. You did well. You did well. But I can't take even what you did well. You completed. You matured. You're coming out of 2017, seven being perfected, being matured. But now I need to one-up you now. I need a new breakthrough. I need a new beginning. And I need you to change your mindset. In fact, I demand, there has to be, there's a demand. Change puts a demand on one's mind. And so my mindset has to change because God is doing new things. Look around you. Can you see it? Can you hear it? He that has an ear. Sometimes we hear, but we don't hear. Sometimes we can see, but we don't have the right perspective. There's a change that God wants you and I to be about as we move into 2018, coming out of the Christmas Yuletide season. He want us to move into 2018 and new beginnings, new ideas, new modalities, new methods and modalities, new ways of doing things, new strategies. Do you know that no matter how well you strategize, how good your strategy was, in a season, when that season is up, that strategy is up. You cannot take that strategy into a new season. So some of you all are frustrated. You still working with a 2015 strategy. And it didn't work in 16 and 17. And you always had a reason why. Now we're going to 18. You cannot carry 2015, 16, or 17 strategy into 18. You have to evolve and grow and seek God and become aware of new strategies and stratagems in what you do. Not only the strategies, but the activities. You know, the activities, what kind of activities, programs, conferences, different activities, we tend to come up with new information and put it on an old activity. And then want to know why it does not seem to work. Because the activity has to be in conformity with the direction. So there has to be a new mindset. There has to be uh, understanding that I'm in a different season now. 
So my new mindset has to relate with my new method, which comes from new strategies, and out of that comes my new activities. Where are you now? Let's examine ourselves as we move into 2018, the year of new beginning, the year of resurrection. Some things have been laying dormant. So what things in life and ministry of God say, up, oh, wake that up. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, O sleeper, shake yourself. Get up. It's time for a new look at it, a time for a new take on it, a time for a new event, a new strategy, a new method, as your mind is changed and renewed. So what God, not, not only does God demand that, Let's look at principle two. God demands that you embrace the knowledge of your placement during transitional times. When you're in transitional times, you get the knowledge where I am, where am I, where has God placed me, what's going around with me right now. You have to begin to be sensitive to what's happening to you what's happening in your life, see what's going around. You have been placed in a position, placed in circumstances, placed around different kinds of people. So while you are in a transitional time, God is introducing, he's taking, he's giving, he's receiving, he's moving, he's readjusting, and you are demanded to be sensitive to every move, every moment, what's going on what's happening in order to appreciate your season of transition. So we got to know our place. Uh, we have to not only know the place we're in right now, we have to learn to love it. Well, apostle, you know, I'm in this place, but I do not like it. I do. No, you're there. Learn to love it. Learn to cope. Look within it. What creative stuff can I get out of it? What is the teaching moment for this? Because this is going to get me to my next. I cannot hate and be frustrated and what is preparing me for my next. So not only must I know my place, I must love the place I'm in, and then I must be committed to the place. Some of us say, well, I know the place I love, but we ain't committed. We're not serving. We're not participating. Well, I'm just here for right now. I'm waiting on what God wants to do. But while you're there waiting on God to do, you're not committed. You're not committed to any assignments. You're not committed to the relationship. You're not committed to the situations and the circumstances that have you there. You got to know it. You got to understand it. You got to love it. And you've got to be committed in it in order to have a full matured shift of transformation into 2018 or into a new season, then you must know it, understand it, love it, accept it, know it, and walk in it. And so not only that, but you must understand uh, not only that, what are my boundaries? What is the boundaries? How, how far can I go in this? What are the rules and regulations in this? And not only the boundaries, but the sphere. How much anointing? How much power? What can I do? What can I not do? How much influence do I have? How much and how do I work within my sphere of the grace that God has given me? How much grace? What is the percentages of my capacity to flow? while at the same time I'm within certain boundaries of what I must do, while at the same time I know where I am, I have to interact and love where I am, and then I have to be committed to where I am. What? What, apostle? You mean I got to go through all of that to be in transition, to be in a transition? So, yes, 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 yes. Isn't that something? Because, see, what you don't overcome and mature in in your old season, in your new season, you carry over that into the new season. So some of us are carrying 15, 
2015, 2016, 2000, 2004, we're carrying situations, circumstances, and issues from one season to the other. We open up our spiritual backpack while we're preparing ourselves to transition, and we drop those things of our past that we have not dealt with and matured into that, and we carry them over the border into a new season, and then we find ourselves having some sense of relationship and interaction in those areas. I challenge you today, as we look at this month, this season, this Yuletide season, this Christmas season, the month of December, as we're preparing ourselves to go into January, where we're preparing ourselves for some of us to go into a whole new season. Your season may not begin with the our seasons of the year. Yours, you may be in the middle of a summer or the end of a spring or the beginning of a fall or halfway through uh, 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 autumn. Or you may be caught up between in your transition you may find yourself caught between, well, I'm not really in the summer of my assignment and my transition. I'm not really in the winter, but I mean, you know, it's like I'm having a season where it's supposed to be moving toward a coldness of moving away, but yet and still there's warmth in it. So what we call that, Indian summer. There's an there's a, a Indian summer. There's, there, it's not really uh, black or white, but it's shades of gray out betwixt and between. So wherever you are in your process, you must be clear of your season and what God has called you to do right now as you are moving forward and transitioning in your season at the same time into a new year. So how do we do that? So principle number one, God will demand a change of mindset from the old season, the old methods, the old strategies, and the old activities as we move into the new. Principle one. Principle two. God demands that you embrace the knowledge of your placement or, or where you are in your season during your transitional times. Where did he put you? Why are you here? Where are you? How are you? Do you know your place in this season? Have you said, I will accept my place and love on it, and then I'm committed to work and serve in this place while in this place, and I understand my boundaries my up, my down, and my boundaries, and my sphere, my grace, my anointings, what I can and what I cannot do, because within that comes our protection. Within that understanding comes our success. We want to be successful, and within that comes our direction and our anointing. And so, as we conclude this challenge this year, as we move into 2018, I challenge you to understand that you are moving into transitional, you're in a transitional season, look at transitional times, know where God has called you. As you step out of one season into another, that time frame of the step is called transition. So until we meet again, until we see each other again, be grateful that God is blessing you because you're walking in purpose and destiny is calling you to your purpose. So it is. Shalom.